At the time, I didn't have any money. I was living on the sofa circuit, they call that. <laughs> and I go to see this guy, and he's singing about this life that I'm living, but he's putting this slant on it that makes it sound fun. <laughs> and chicks are clapping. <laughs> and then in that moment, it occurred to me that the, like, the difference between a free loader and a free spirit <laughs> could possibly be three chords. <laughs> and so I got this fucking thing and I, and I started practicing it. I went to every Jerry Jeff show. Really, if you, if you learn, if you know guitar, you know that my songs are just kind of changed up little versions of his songs. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I don't care, I don't care who knows. <laughs> and I moved to, I remember when I was young and playing in bars before I made an album, uh, I, I would, every time he'd come to town, I would have a letter that I wrote, you know, some kind of, you're my fucking dad, you know, uh, something. But I never gave him these letters. And I, I'd, 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 I'd write them and not send them. And, I think I might have waited in line and have him sign something one time, but other than that, I just was in the front row. And I, I remember one time, I felt like he was like, damn, that kid's here a lot, you know? Like, <laughs> and, and then when I got in, it was like 93 or 94, I got to make an album. And I, and I remember telling, um, well, it was, actually it was just, but the album hadn't come out yet. But because I was gonna have an album, I was getting gigs that I wouldn't have normally got, you know, so I got this gig opening for Jerry Jeff, and I thought, fuck yeah, this is it. I'm gonna meet this guy. And so I go and I do my set. I thought it went pretty good. I go back into the uh, dressing room, and there, there he is, and I had this speech planned, you know? <laughs> uh, man, the house, the highlight of my life and all this shit. And I was, about, I was gonna go into it, and I noticed there was this uh, woman that was with him and she was yelling at him and I couldn't figure out why she was mad at him. And then as I started to take in what she was saying to him, she was telling him that she loved him and that he was great. It just was the way she was saying it was fucked up. And I, it occurred to me that he didn't know her and that she had snuck back and that he was mortified. And, and, and then she turned to me and was like, oh, you sang too, S uh, sign this. And she holds up her poster and says, Jerry, Jeff, turn around. And he turns around without thinking and she sticks this poster on his back and hands me the fucking pen. <laughs> and of all the scenarios in my mind that I had dreamed up about meeting my hero, this, this chick was in none of them. And So I fucked up because I just, without thinking, I start signing the thing, but also just went into my spiel that I had planned, which starts with, this is the highlight of my life. So, <clears throat> before I can get any further into this story about how much I love this guy, he says, sounds like you've had a pretty boring life so far, okay? And I took that personally. <laughs> Uh, no, and I remember he was it sounds like a boring life so far. And, uh, and I, I laughed and I thought that was a good one. And, and uh, I didn't meet him again, but I turned up the speed on my life. And then when my album came out like two years later, I was at a festival and he was on the festival too. And I didn't want to fuck it up this time. So I just ran over and I grabbed him and I hugged him and I said, you're like a king to me. And uh, he looked at me like he was looking at that girl in the thing. <laughs> the bill I'm on the bill and I said I'm a uh, Todd Snyder you know and he was like okay I know that you're on the thing today and he didn't remember him so uh, and then I said to him that day I said man I am really I I'm, I know everything there is to know about you man I mean that, that's public I know everything and he's like I doubt that boy but it, but since then He's become a, a really close person, like a guy that I really look up to and admire. And uh, I have kicked his ass more than once 
roundly in Jerry Jeff Walker trivia contests. <laughs> no shit. His wife has seen this. And one of the great joys in my life, man, is that he, he will call me from his hotel one time because he can't remember the words to his chip. <laughs> But, uh, man, so, I, to make a short story long as fuck, <laughs> he calls me up and he says, man, I gotta show you, have you ever been snorkeling? You ever seen any beautiful coral reef or anything like that? And I'm like, no, he goes, I'm gonna show it to you. So he takes me down to Belize, and we get on this boat, and he's like, you ever, we're, I'm gonna show you how to snorkel, it's gonna be beautiful, blow your mind. So we go out into this ocean, he stops and talks to this guy, we go in, he teaches me how to do it, flop off the back, blow the thing out, look around, it'll be beautiful. I do exactly what he says to do. I open my eyes, right? And below me, everywhere actually, uh, sharks, not just a couple of them, not just a couple of them, like a shit ton of them. And, and stingrays too, like a nightmare amount, like a nightmare amount. And I come up out of the water like, ah, and he's laughing so hard that this is like so funny to him. That he's been setting this joke for months. There's no fucking coral reef, none. It's like a tame shark farm. Fuck, fucking God. Ah. I gotta, I gotta keep going, I gotta keep going. I'm just saying I gotta keep going. Uh, because then, this is like, now we're about like 98 or something, and I've been on the road for like four years, and in those days, I would have this um, uh, tackle box that I would keep all the drugs that people would give to me. Because people, well, come on. People give, uh, everybody gives their drugs to musicians, I don't know why, and you don't wanna be rude, and you can't take them all at the same time, you know? So even if it was something I don't even like, I keep it, I got it, somebody want it, hey, what's that, huh? And uh, Jerry Jeff always thought that was funny, you know? And uh, every time he'd come into one of our dressing rooms, he'd tap on that thing and look in it, you know? And so we're in New Orleans uh, one night, and I happened to have a drug that you people from the 80s and 70s remember, but my generation, we didn't do uh, cocaine, as you call it. Yeah, I mean, a, li a little bit, but that wasn't our thing. We did ecstasy and shit like that. In our, but, but boy, I'm dope, of course, but, but coke was more like, uh, I don't know. It never, never got, I, I listen, if I did, look, I, can't, I talk enough, right? I never done my thing. So I, I had that for a while, but I had heard that he was into it. And that he had, they used to call him Mr. Blow Jangles. And so, when he asked me what was in there, I was like, well, man, uh, there happens to be uh, something in there tonight, you know? And he's like, oh, man, I used to roar down here on that shit in the 70s, man. And that was all I heard. Good friend went out the window. And all I could hear was, me and Jerry Jeff are going to roar like it's the 70s. <laughs> And I talked him into it. And we went back to his house, and we did it. And now, this is the portion of the story that I have to stop and say, this is what everybody told me happened. Because <laughs> after I tried some, I, I guess I did the fish in the bottom of the boat dance on their coffee table, <laughs> threw up, he throws me into the shower, his wife stays there to take care of me because I've ruined the evening and everybody else goes out. Then I wake up in the middle of the night, not knowing where I am, which wasn't crazy uncommon then, you know, and I'm like, oh shit, how am I gonna get back to the band? And then I hear these stomping feet and it scares the shit out of me and I don't wanna open my eyes. And I'm like, oh God, where am I? And I'm trying, what happened, what happened, what happened, what happened after the show? Stomp. And then I hear this voice go, never again, boy. <laughs> Fucking never again, boy. And it all comes back. I know that voice, I know what I did, and I don't want to open my eyes now. And so he stops right in front of my head, and he says, you hear me, boy?